event that happens here does not happen without the support of the community. If everyone said no, no to advertising and no, we're not coming to the field to do the food and Phillips said no, it would just simply not happen. The nature of this event is it's starting to pose really interesting questions as to what kind of a community we want to be for the next 25 to 30 years. I don't think a lot of communities have done that, a lot, or a lot of festivals have done that. You know, festivals in the past here in Victoria have been really focused on celebrating our heritage, celebrating past cultures. And I think Rifflandia is asking questions about what are we going to be going forward. multi-day music festival happen? Well, there's the bands, of course, and the food vendors, and the fans who love to go see the shows. But how do you pull off a festival the size of Riflandia? You really need the support of an entire community. The volunteers, the local businesses and organizations, and the people who work for the festival. In this episode, we'll show you how local Victorians rally around the festival each year, and how thousands of people come together to make it all happen. I don't know, I combat that notion every day when people say, you know, don't you find it difficult? And I say, what are you talking about? There's tons of incredibly progressive minded people, whether it's from parks to uh, facilities, you know, there's people that they want to see things happen. I'm a bit of an optimistic guy, which can be the problem, right? It's like, this is a great idea, let's go do it. Uh, and then the phone calls. Oh wait, and one year, one year somebody, one of the, I forget who it was, Maybe it was De La Soul? I forget who it was totally swearing during sound checks. It was during the day and it was echoing through the neighborhood and they're like, are you know, swearing on the main stage? You know, that, that's kind of the uh, thing. Okay, should have thought of that. I think we should give some credit to the city of Victoria and, and the people that run Royal Athletic Park to, to give them a, a, a shout out that they took a bit of a chance. I mean, this was an uh, unproven festival to a lot of citizens and residents of Victoria and I think that them getting on board I know they believe in Atomique and they believe in the festival and, and they opened the doors year after year uh, despite maybe some complaints from public and, and people that don't go to the festival and I think they've weathered the storm and I think now it, it can run for as long as it wants at Royal Athletic Park. Riflandia has been incredibly community driven. There's no major corporate sponsor. It's all local businesses who get behind it and make it all happen. They've also found a really interesting way of giving added value to the fans and local businesses through a program called Wristband Connect. Wristband Connect was the idea that they would, during the day, need to find something for all of these attendees to do. And so they would send them out into downtown Victoria, the surrounding areas, and say, these are all the shops that you need to go and check out so that you can have the most authentic Victoria experience and maybe see something that you weren't used to seeing or experience a new business, even if you're from this town, it might have been a place that you'd never gone. And in exchange, all of the services and retailers would offer discounts. Yeah, every year we do something different. I think last year was one dollar cups of coffee. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of, it just what's really great about that is it encourages people that are going to the festival to discover rad local businesses. That's one of the things that's great about Victoria is they really support their local entrepreneurs as long as they're authentic yeah. and they're doing something, you know, genuine for the city. Another big aspect of a community are the kids, and Riflandia definitely provides them a number of opportunities to get involved. Children under the age of 10 can access the park for free with their parents, 
as long as their parents have a wristband. There are games at the park and an entire area designated Kidlandia, where they can do crafts, screen print shirts, and other fun things. And I think that's, that's the, the beauty of the park and what that offers. It's grass underfoot. It's, uh, it's not an enclosed space in a sense. It's open. You're free to roam. There's face painting for kids. There's food. It's important to involve those people because that is often the people with young families are, are the first who get excluded, especially when you're talking about a nightclub event, um, 19 and above, or at such a late hour at the night that bringing your family is, is just not possible. That's the beauty of that, is the park appeals to just such a huge segment of society. Like, it's cool, kids get so excited about running around the park and I mean it doesn't always stay contained in Kidlandia but I think it's nice to have a home base where they can make pins or color you know. You know I think one of the more interesting elements to this is that it's become family friendly for a certain generation but it hasn't removed any of the authentic components of being part of a cool music culture. I think that that's a pretty rare thing it's like either events become you know, big rock events that aren't family friendly or they become only family friendly and they lose a, a whole younger generation of people who are very interested in music. The people who will actually pay for a ticket and stand in the rain to watch a show. One thing that can never be overlooked are the volunteers and support staff of Riflandia. Last year, there were over 450 local Victorians volunteering, doing everything from maintaining the recycling to working the gates and writing for Riflandia magazine. The people are all so great. It's like that first year, I was just like, I felt like I was part of a family. And I know that sounds so cliche and stupid, but the, like they're all the best. I love, I just like everybody that's putting it on. They're all so sweet and they, seem so humble and, and really nice and loving and, and I don't know it's just fun to be there and be one of them and see all the people coming and going and then be like oh well, I, I'm here I'm, I'm helping or something it's nice to be it's just nice to help. I think people really want to give their time well A because obviously you get a festival or something and that's pretty cool like without having to pay like a lot of people just if they can get the work done earlier to them that's just an awesome payoff it works well for us and then they get to just go enjoy the festival but for people who go above and beyond, I think it's that they just want to see how the magic happens. Like it is a bit of a mystery. It's like, it just appears. It's, it, to a lot of people it's just like, oh, it's, it's just pop, popped up. What happened there? Riflandia also has a diverse staff ranging from industry veterans to people who join with little or no experience who have become an integral part of the team. They've been very important to the, to the success of the festival and you know I'm really grateful and I'm sure Nick and Casey are too that a lot of them have been with us for a long time now and are very dedicated you know to contributing to the to the vision and development and success of the festival. A, a random but important part of my job is looking after signage, like festival signage, and so <laughs> it, it seems like just a boring job, but it's so complex because there's so many pieces of signage. Like, we could run our own signage store. <laughs> we rent a lot of tents. We put up a lot of fence. We rent a lot of porta potties. Uh, you know, and as a company, this isn't the only, only, only event we do, so we're doing things all year long. We're fortunate enough to a lot of our suppliers who are working with us right now, we've had 10-year relationships with or longer. Um, but there's some, um, yeah, there's some great characters. By involving as many people from the local community as possible, Riflandia has become a platform for the many creative and interesting folks living in Victoria. In our next episode, we'll speak with some of these people, the artists and creators who make up Victoria's thriving art scene. Arts and culture, next time on Reflandia TV.